Good morning, Howard. Good morning, Bob. Welcome, everybody. We're uh, just getting started with Earl here, and I've made the paracentesis and put in some 1% lidocaine. We have had some lidocaine gel on the cornea. This is a Mastel 2.8 stealth diamond, and I'm making it a little larger because we're going to use a high infusion sleeve. We have a generous enough incision which the high infusion sleeve allows then we can usually get the monarch injector through that without enlarging okay I find that if they can patient can look just to the side of the light and get the reflex of the optic nerve for a brighter red reflex and as well they're not having all the light exposure to the macula. Try to look at the light, please. Or just a wee bit to the left of it. Howard, there's a question from the audience. Who taught you capsule erexus? Uh, That's just to relax you. Well, it's interesting how capsule erexus evolved from from little segments of tears to realizing we can we could do it in one continuous circle. Can you watch the light, please? So with this Advantech system software, we can, uh, with the foot switch, I'll show you later on the or a switch on the foot switch. We can change to all the settings sequentially, forward or backward. Now that we've got the viscoat removed, hit the button again, and then we're into the PECO mode. This is a fairly soft lens. We can use the high vacuum to aspirate, mostly aspirate the nuclear material. These soft lenses are the ones you have to be more careful almost than with hard lenses as far as going through the capsule with the thaco tip. the epinucleus I like to go to a little lower setting. It doesn't bite it off and so much allows it to follow. So we're at 250 maximum vacuum here. Are you using the bimodal? I always use the bimodal, yes, which I like very much, especially when you go Trying to tease some epinucleus out. So he's used two modes now. The first was the visco mode on the Advantech software for the removal of the visco elastic before he initiated the FACO. And then, of course, the FACO mode. Notice this is a silicone tipped IA. allows us to to get on the posterior capsule with less risk of tearing. So it's a silicone tip on a durable INA. Memory one. I've switched to I minimum now, sixty-six 
millimeters of vacuum. With these little strands, I go up against the anterior capsule. Pick them off in the, at the equator. Try to get it stripping from anterior to posterior. And 30, there's a few little strands there. I have this uh, cannula that is a 30 gauge. I'm deepening the chamber and slipping under the anterior capsule out again into the equator to get these strands that I couldn't reach with the other instrument. That's the answer to your question, Lisa, right there. Howard, someone asked if a point two might be more useful than a point three for these small strands with the INA. Yes, it would be. But not as efficient when you want to um, get thicker epinucleus out. So it's a trade-off. See, we didn't have to enlarge the incision. This is the single piece SA60. It's a full six millimeter optic through an unenlarged FACO incision. And we've put the elbow under the capsule so that as it uh, unfolds, and you can use the IA tip to speed up the unfolding. IA cap back. Memory one, I A max. Memory one. And the provis comes out easily because of its cohesiveness. And I like to go under the eye well to get the viscoelastic out. And then All right, notice it's very easy to de center this. Just watch me push that, open up that loop a little. You can use the I A tip to unfold the lens haptic to yes Bob it decenters very nicely when you deliberately move it to, to facilitate your visco removal yes notice there's pupillary reverse pupillary block here if I just break the adhesion between uh, the iris in the capsule. There was just a little strand of cortex I was going for there. You break the adhesion between the capsule and the iris. And the chamber shallows. And patients will feel that uh, stretch of the iris root. So that's just balanced salt now to to reinflate the chamber and then I'm putting the vancomycin under the lens. This is one milligram and a tenth of an ml. And then injecting, it, the, in, injecting the antibiotic into the bag? Yes, swirl under the IOL. And then forming the chamber now with more balanced salt to get the pressure ideal. And at this point or earlier I like to just tease the inner lip of the incision, feather it out sometimes it folds from the instruments coming out of the eye. You're, you're hydrating, of, are you hydrating the incision, Howard? At I the don't end? hydrate uh, unless it doesn't seal. It's a little more viscoelastic there.
Are the haptics fully expanded at this time? Sometimes they're not at this time, but the um, tackiness of the material attaches to the capsule well enough to keep the lens centered. You referred to the, the lips of the wound and the behavior of the wound. Can you review that for the audience? Yes, I, I've noticed on clear corneal incisions that the inner lip of the incision sometimes will fold, fold in and there'll be a, um, a large area without decimase on the uh, inner part of the incision. But if you can just, uh, with a cannula, irrigate it back or manipulate it, you can unfold it so that it uh, has a more, a more minimal uh, defect in the capsule, in the uh, decimase there.